The readings for Masses on Sundays are contained in a book called the Lectionary, from the Latin word lexio, which means reading. The lectionary is divided into a three-year cycle, and this year we're reading from year C, the third year. I mention this because last time we read from year C was three years ago in 2019. So on Sunday, October 13th, 2019, the 28th Sunday of the ordinary time of the church year, we heard the readings that we have just heard today. But I would presume that back then, we heard these readings in a very different way. 2019 was the year before the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. And in the two and a half years that have followed, we have had experiences that most of us have never had before. In 2019, when we heard about Naaman, the army commander of the Arameans in our first reading, and the Samaritan leper in today's gospel, we probably paid little attention to them or to their sufferings. But when we hear about them today, something is different. What is different is the fact that since 2019, because of the pandemic, we have had experiences similar to these biblical characters. Like the lepers in today's readings, we had to keep our distance from others in public places, mask our faces when we were out among strangers, and if we tested positive for the coronavirus, we had to isolate ourselves and warn others of our health status. All of this can give us an insight and deepen our appreciation for the plight of the lepers in ancient times. The big difference, of course, is that our infection, especially if we had been vaccinated, is short-term. And for the lepers in the scripture, their disease was a lifelong condition with no hope for healing or recovery. But if we recognize ourselves even slightly in these scripture stories, what can we learn? First, let's look at the connection between Naaman and the Samaritan. The fathers of the church noted three parallels between them. First, both Naaman and the Samaritan were foreigners who sought healing from a godly Jew. Second, both were ordered to perform seemingly irrelevant actions. Elisha told Naaman to bathe in the river seven times. And Jesus told the lepers to show themselves to the priest who could certify their healing. In both stories, the healing took place only after they obeyed. Third, both Naaman and the Samaritan returned to praise God. So in each case, you see, we see that God's love is not limited to certain people, even if they see themselves as having a special relationship with God. Neither Naaman or the Samaritan were part of the people of Israel. Yet in each case, God's mercy came to them. Both healings foreshadow the universality of the messianic salvation that Jesus is journeying to Jerusalem to accomplish. How often do we go about our discipleship assuming that God will work within the parameters we set? We spend time praying that God will do exactly what I want. And then God surprises us, acting beyond our expectations and our imagination. God will not be outdone in generosity. So, how can we apply all this to our own lives? Well, we could count off by 10 members of our congregation, our class, our place of employment, our extended family, and have every 10th person stand up and be recognized as the one in 10 who is grateful. But that hardly seems accurate or fair. I don't believe for a moment that there's anyone who's not grateful for something. I'm sure every one of us is grateful for something. Perhaps the one in 10, the 10%, should be seen in another way. Perhaps we're only grateful 10% of the time. Or maybe we're only grateful for 10% of our blessings. And 90% of the time, we don't remember all the good things we've received 
or we take them for granted and don't bother to be grateful at all. When we were growing up, many of us learned that our night prayers before we go to sleep should include what was called an examination of conscience. This examine was supposed to focus our attention on what we did wrong, our failings, our shortcomings, our mistakes, our sins, so that the next day we could do better. Many years ago, a very wise priest suggested to me that this examine should also include a positive inventory. We should think about our accomplishments, what we did right, our good acts, our acts of kindness, how we put our virtues into practice. And today I would like to suggest another positive approach. What if at the end of each day, we did a litany, a list of let's say 10 blessings, 10 things we have that we are grateful for, 10 gifts that God gave us this day. Maybe it's something that we have all the time, like a roof over our head, or maybe it's something special that occurred just that day beautiful weather, a call from a lost friend, an unexpected compliment or an act of kindness that someone extended to us. Maybe it's the realization that even if we did come down sick with coronavirus, we got over it. Whatever it is, like Naaman, who returned to thank Elisha, or like the Samaritan who raced back to thank Jesus, it should make us stop in our tracks, turn around, and give praise to the God who is always, always so good to us.